going to show you how I make my granola base. This is a basic granola and once it's baked off, you add whatever ingredients you like. Uh, we're going to start with oats, of course, that's the main part of granola. You can use any kind of oats. You can use rolled oats, you can use uh, quick oats, you can use natural oats. What I have here today, it says these are sprouted rolled oats. Sounds interesting, it's the first time I've used that. I've got five pounds here, so when I make granola, I make it in bulk. <laughs> so five pounds is a good amount of granola. Remember, you can store it away for a long time, um, and uh, you know, if, if it's a very long time, you can put it in your freezer, but you have plenty of granola. So get a large bowl, and you got five pounds of sprouted rolled oats in the bowl, okay? Next, I am going to come over here and put my kettle on, my water kettle on to boil. I have about one and a half liters of water in there. So the other main part of your granola base will be raisins. So I have here a pound of uh, organic, actually two pounds, two pounds of organic and that dried raisins and you put that in a separate mixing bowl. Now what I like to do is these bags, they have a nice little zip lock on them in here, so I repurpose them. I put my finished granola right back in the bag, bag make a good storage container, good repurposing and recycling. So we set those aside. While we're heating up our water, we want to put some ingredients in the granola. One ingredient, very essential, and that is salt. Without salt, uh, you won't be able to taste any of the flavors in, in the granola. So I'm gonna put maybe, maybe a tablespoon and a half of salt. And it's salt to taste. You don't want it salty, you just want to bring out the flavors. Uh, at this point, and this is totally optional, you can put some spices in if you want. A spice that I like to use a lot in granola is coriander. Now this is totally optional. You don't have to put any spice at all. Just sprinkle a little coriander on there. That helps uh, bring out the flavor too. You don't want it too strong. And also mace is a good little flavoring. So I want to just put a little mace in there. Not too much mace, is very strong. So we want to do that. And then we want to just sugar coat the top. You don't have to use sugar. You don't have to use any sweetener at all. You can use sweeteners like agave, or uh, I don't like to use honey because I use raw honey and raw honey is not good when you cook. You know, you're going to destroy the honey. So just for flavor, I just want to put a little coat of sugar on the top, just like you're coating something. This stuff springs up. This is all organic sugar. Now, uh, water's boiled, so this is a very important step. We want to take our bowl of raisins and we just want to cover it. Cover it with boiling water. Or very hot water, it doesn't necessarily have to be boiling. I just, so, just, just cover the raisins. Okay, so we're going to take our mixing spoon and mix it around a little bit. What we want to do is add something that is going to help help it stick together. Um, today I'm going to use about a cup of almond flour. Uh, you can use coconut flour. So we just want to put maybe a cup and a half of almond flour on top of it. Like I said, you can use coconut flour. Uh, what's another thing? Uh, anything that's ground up. You can even grind up some oats. Uh, you can use wheat flour if you don't find wheat. Some people use wheat flour for granola. I like to use my wheat for bread. <laughs> this is some grapeseed oil. It's about a half a cup. So we want to just sprinkle some grapeseed oil over the top. This, is, this makes it, helps make it crispy. Help, you know, it gives it a nice texture. I would say a half a cup of rapeseed oil. And then one of my favorite and most important ingredients is we have a 
one pound jar of tahini. So we want to, first of all, tahini separates. So we, that's that's great stuff to put in your granola. Is that oil on top, and then of course we want to get all of the tahini out of there. Tahini's made with sesame seeds. It's a good source of protein. Very good source of protein. So a good way to get some of that extra tahini out of the jar is to take some of your water from the raisins and that will melt the tahini. Shake it out a little bit. Shake, shake, shake the jar. Pretty much it. We got all the tahini off the sides of the jar. Just kind of pour that on top. Now these raisins, they you need to soak them for at least five minutes, five to ten minutes. What that does is it makes the raisins plump. They're gonna dry up again in the oven, but you don't want them to dry up and burn in the oven. And also, it sweetens the juice of water. Now, when your raisins have become nice and plump, we can take them and just put them in the mixture. And we mix it all together. You want to stir up from the bottom. I like to stir it and spin my bowl around as I'm stirring. And I like kneading bread. Just will work everything into there. We're looking for it to kind of hold together when you squeeze it a little bit, but we don't want it too wet or else you're just going to get some oatmeal cookies, which is a bad thing. We want something that you want to put in bags and store away. So this is getting to be a pretty good consistency. I want to show you here. Once you have it mixed together, we want to be able to just be able to make a little ball all this crap apart. And that's perfect. Perfect for your granola. This is a very good granola mix. Right here. Make sure all your ingredients are mixed in there. Let's give it a smell. Oh, yes. This is a good granola base. Okay, we want to set our oven temperature to 350 degrees. It's perfect. Okay, so here we have our baking sheets. We have about three baking sheets. Just want to take a little bit of that oil and get it onto the bottom of the baking sheets. The baking sheet. the baking sheet. We want it to be as loose as possible because we don't want to compact it. And we probably want to go about an inch of loosely spread granola. Very loose spread granola. Alright, so we have one here. So we want to make sure that our oven racks are set no lower than the middle. So we have two oven racks and we're just going to put those in the oven on the racks. And we're going to set the timer for 15 minutes. So 
So we'll come back in 15 minutes and flip over the granola. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and we want to remove the bottom rack to start with. And we want to flip it over. So the bottom rack usually gets most of the heat on the bottom. So we want to make sure that we flip the granola over and then put it back in the oven. This time we're going to rotate and put that on the top rack and then what was on the top rack we're going to put on the bottom rack. And now it's time to flip over the top rack. I like to flip it into the middle and then just kind of flip the middle and it just mixes around. Spread it around in the pan. And back in the oven we go. This time we want to go 10 minutes. Okay, so now it's been 10 minutes and we want to remove the bottom rack from the oven and give it a flip. You can see how it's starting to get a little golden brown on the bottom, which is good. We don't want it to get too brown. And flip the middle. Spread it back out. You can see it's starting to look like granola. And we want to put that one back on the top rack. So Take this pan off the bottom rack, give it a flip, around the edge, we don't want it to burn around the edge, we're just roasting it. Turn it back out. Now you can see it's uh, getting nice and golden brown. So we're going to put it in and we want to put it in for another five minutes and we'll see if it's done. Okay, five minutes and let's see what we get. A nice golden brown 350 degree so we want to transfer this to the pan to cool off. There we go. We'll set that aside. And then we'll load up our pan with another load. And we just keep doing this until there's no more granola left to bake. This goes back. Fifteen minutes, ten minutes, and five minutes. So, you can see that's very nicely done. Oops. Let's put it where you can see it. Transfer this to the cooling pan. And it's good to make a little pile of it because it keeps cooking in the middle a little bit. 
if you wish. And in the oven you go. Now let's take a look at this. So we want it to be not, I like it a little bit kind of moist, but not too dry. Golden brown, nice consistency. That's gonna set up really well. And then we're gonna put our other ingredients in it. Now, after we've, after we've put the last batch in, we can now take the finished granola and put it into a big bowl. Cause I don't have another big bowl. And we're gonna need this for mixing in the final ingredients. So, in the oven with this. So here we have it, a big bowl of granola. The last batch has come out of the oven and it's ready for whatever you wanna put into it. Um, any kind of nuts, dried fruits, apricots, anything you wanna put in there to enhance it. Today we have some, I got some unsweetened coconut flakes. I'll throw those in there. And throw it in and mix it in and then some dates. We have chopped dates, or I'm going to chop some pitted dates. Put some dates in there. That's it. And got a good deal on this nice big bag of uh, slivered almonds. Just for me, slivered almonds. But slivered almonds. And there you go. So that's a lot of almonds. <laughs> we have, don't forget, we are already have the almond flour in there too. So I'm going to. Chop up these dates, so fine, let's chop them up like that. Chop up the whole bag of dates and uh, those will go in. These these come chopped. So whatever you can pick up, whatever you have, you can get a good deal on. Those are pre-chopped dates. And just mix it into your granola. You can put some sweetener in if you want. I prefer to put my sweetener, uh, when I serve myself a bowl of it, I put my own sweetener in it. Uh, usually some raw honey, which will, you know, you don't want to cook it into the granola, but it's a good eating raw on top. And I usually eat my granola with homemade yogurt. Um, I do have a video, a video on how I make yogurt uh, very quickly and easily. So there it is. Almonds, raisins, dates, coconut. That's a nice, nice, nice granola mix. So uh, I'm gonna get to work chopping the rest of these dates up and that's how you do it for later. Don't forget to stick around on my channel and you can see lots of other good things what I do.